Hi everybody, just a quick video today to look at a tool that will help us when we bring in geospatial data into Civil 3D. And the tool is specifically around adding annotation to this geospatial data. In most cases, geospatial data contains attributes. And in the process of bringing that into Civil 3D and converting it into DWG objects, we'd like to be able to use those attributes to automatically add annotation. So let me show you how we would go about doing this. First thing, let's go ahead and bring in some, uh, some information. I'm going to use the tool map import. Uh, I'll go ahead and type that in. In using map import, what that will do for us is give us the ability to connect to any number of different geospatial file formats. But at the same time, rather than an FDO connection, which would create a live connection to the data, this would convert these objects directly into um, AutoCAD entities or DWG type objects. So I'm going to go ahead, in this case, we've got parcel information. We'll go ahead and click on OK. I'm going to go ahead and bring in any data associated with our parcels. And if I uh, click on Create Object Data and then Select Fields, we see that our parcels have a, an APN attribute associated with it, and that APN represents the parcel identification number or the PIN. So we'll go ahead and select that to make sure that that comes in. We'll import our polygons as closed polylines. We'll click on OK. And if I zoom extents, we can see my, uh, my parcel boundaries as brought in from the shape file. Now if we select one of these objects, it comes in as a polyline, and if we scroll down under properties here, we come down to the bottom, we see here's our uh, attribute that's associated with that, uh, 52140803 is a parcel identification number. What I would like to do for each one of these parcels that has a, an identifier associated with it, I'd like to add that annotation to my drawing or to my exhibit. Rather than trying to read this information and recreate it myself, um, what I can do is I can use a quick tool within Civil 3D here to do this for us automatically. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create some map annotation, which is some special annotation. So what we'll do is I'm going to make sure that I'm in the map workspace. So we'll go ahead and go to planning and analysis. I'm going to go to annotate, and then we're going to define a map annotation template. So we'll go ahead and select that. And when it comes up, we'll create a, a new one. I'll just call this one uh, um, pin, and I'm going to say dash Tuesday for right now. We can have multiple annotation templates depending on the things that we're going to annotate. So we'll, uh, we'll do that. It brings up a uh, basically what we would see if we were going to be creating a, a block. All right, and it gives us tools across the top for all the different things that we would use in building this block. However, there is one thing that... Uh, a tool that we're going to need, we want it to be able to read the object data uh, from our objects and then be able to bring that into the block definition itself. Unfortunately, that was left out of the ribbon here, so we need to know what the name of that, that uh, command is to get that. And we're going to start typing it in. It's map an for map annotation, and you start to see with the autocomplete, it's map and text for map annotation text. So we need to remember that. I'm going to select that. Uh, it asks me to select annotation or hit enter to create a new one. We'll hit enter. The tag that we will use for this, I'll call this pin for parcel index number. And the value, this is where it's important, I can click in the uh, button over here on the side and this is what's going to allow me to drill down into the object data. So for the objects that I apply this annotation to, I can reach into that object and I can quickly find the um, parcel index number that's associated with my object data. So we'll say OK. Uh, Textile, we can control is pretty self-explanatory. Height, I'm going to set that to 5. Rotation, I'm going to leave that at 0. Justification, I'm going to leave that uh, middle justified. And I'm not going to worry about changing the other properties. We'll click on OK. Where am I going to put that? I'll say it's 0, 0. So my insertion point for this block will be right at the, uh, the center. So we'll zoom in, take a quick look at that. That looks good. We'll go ahead and close the block editor. It's going to ask us to save changes. Uh, it's, it's automatically going to add some additional information to the front because it is a special piece of annotation or therefore a special block. So it's got this at the beginning of Pin Tuesday, what we've defined, so that's fine. We'll click to save changes. And then I can define some additional um, things that I can use with respect to this that weren't part of perhaps the, uh, the initial creation. Uh, I'm going to add my insertion point so that when it's brought in to my um, 
objects here, my enclosed polygons or polylines that represent my parcels, I'm going to say at the centroid. So it'll try and find the centroid of the object. That's where it'll place it. Not going to worry about changing any layers, colors, or scale or anything else. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and say OK. So with that created, it's as simple as this. We can just come up to Insert, drag this dialog down here a little bit. Uh, annotation Template, I'll select this guy. Once again, we could have many of these defined within our model. Uh, insertion Point's going to be the centroid. Uh, don't have anything else that we'd like to uh, change, so we'll go ahead and say Insert. As far as selecting objects, we'll take and pick and make a crossing across all of our parcels. When I pick and then right click, it automatically adds our, uh, our annotation. Now if I select the annotation itself, we see that it comes up as a block reference. As I mentioned before, it is a custom block reference. But what's cool is this block reference is tied to the object data for the corresponding um, polyline or polygon that, uh, that contains our, our object data. So if I select the polygon or the parcel uh, itself, the outline, let's scroll down. We see here's the uh, number for the APN that's associated with that. Let's do this just very quickly so we can see how this works. I'm going to update that number to be 1000 at the end. And when I hit enter, the value is changed with respect to the object data. And then what we can do is we can come up under the map annotation area here. There is an option to update annotation. So if any of that underlying data uh, becomes modified in any way, we can update the annotation. Annotation templates to update will be this guy. And when I click on OK, uh, update the annotation. Local overrides will retain any overrides. We see that it automatically updated my annotation to reflect the changes that were made. All right. So uh, using the map annotation tool, or actually the map and text is, is the uh, specific tool that we're looking at today, we're able to bring in geospatial data that contains attributes. These uh, This data could be parcels, it could be uh, soils information, it could be pipes, uh, could be uh, uh, structure locations, could be any number of things. And when that data comes in, we can take the underlying attributes and then automatically, using this map annotation tool, uh, have it automatically add annotation to those so that we don't have to go back and look for some other mechanism to, uh, to uh, add that annotation, in most cases, manually. So a uh, quick auto automatic way of, uh, of doing this. I uh, hope it proves helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.